meditation the indomitable patience excerpt from horizons beyond the mind meditation requires indomitable patience and courage meditation is the english word to mean a process but this word is incomplete it does not give the complete indication of what the process is like Dhyan is a Hindi word which means meditation and Agni means fire. We should call the entire process as Dhyan Agni, the fire of meditation. The fire of meditation. What actually happens? This lighting of the fire is considered to be a Hindu sacrament, Hindu Ovi. Two things happen. In the fire, all that is impure, it burns. And whatever you put into it, like for instance, if you put a gold metal, it removes all the impurities and gives it a different texture, different glare, different look. Meditation is indeed a fire. It does two things. First, it burns your past totally. It relieves you of your past by consuming your mind without leaving a trace behind. Meditation burns the past. Remember, your past contains everything, your religion, your recognition with the religion, politics, nationality, race, conditioning and all that comes within this periphery. It contains all that is wrong and futile and non-essential. It is just the garbage that we have been loaded by others and now carrying as our position and heritage. Everyone carries this garbage as our position, the Hindus, the Christians, the Jews, the Muslims, all of them are carrying this garbage as their position or heritage or culture or whatever you may call this. The fire of meditation consumes it totally and the moment it has consumed all that is not part of you but exists in you as conditioning your being for the first time rises ever because it is no more burdened, no more crushed under the weight of the past. The weight of the past is too much, almost mountainous and your being is just like a rose flower, very delicate. How can you it carry the burden of the mountainous past? The moment rocks are removed, the rose starts growing. Hence, the fire of meditation does two things. First, it is a death. As you are loaded with conditionings, the past and second, it is a resurrection, a new beginning, a rebirth of new treasure of which you are unaware. This is why there are two aspects of Jesus. One is the aspect of Jesus and the other is the Christ. This is what Jesus said to Nicodemus when he asked him, Unless you are reborn again, you shall not enter into my kingdom of God. Nicodemus asked him, Master, who can enter the kingdom of your father of God? Jesus told him, unless you are born again, you shall not enter into my kingdom of God. This is what exactly meditation does. It destroys you as you are and it resurrects you as you should be. Dhyan means meditation and the flowering in meditation requires and the flowering in meditation requires indomitable courage 
and infinite patience. Two things go side by side, indomitable courage and patience. Courage because you are all by yourself, cut off from the vast crowd of which you are a part. You start feeling that there is no one else. I am all alone. In the temple and the churches, you are comfortable because there is a vast crowd around you. When you are alone, all kinds of fear begins to come. That is why it requires tremendous courage. So courage is the first criteria and then it is not something that it will happen overnight. The flower of meditation takes long to blossom. It requires infinite patience. The flowering of meditation takes time. It requires patience. Meditation needs infinite patience. When cannot grow into meditation in a hurry. It can never be like instant coffee. It is not a seasonal flower. It is like the star touching tall cedars of Lebanon. The star touching tall cedars of Lebanon. It takes hundreds of years for those trees to rise ever into the sky. And they live for thousands of years Therefore, touching the stars or whispering to the moon. Meditation is going to give you the whole eternity. Certainly, it cannot happen in a hurry. One has to be really patient. And this is one of the qualities modern humanity has completely lost track of. This Hurriedness is one of the contributions of the Western mind to the entire world. Everyone is in a hurry to attain to this and that, to acquire this and that. There is a basic reason for it. The Judic religion and its offshoots, Christianity and Islam, are indeed the root cause of it. They have been talking about only one life. If this is the only one life, then naturally one is in a hurry. Because in childhood you are not aware of meditation. When you are youth, you are not interested in things like these. You have other things to care for. It is only when you are uh, attain the middle age, then you start worrying about meditation and you know the life is fast moving. This is the reason that you are in a hurry. Just a life of 70 years, that too if you are fortunate and if you calculate, you will find it is not enough. First, one-third will be lost in schools, colleges, universities and reading all kind of unnecessary things, geography, history, geology, zoology and this and that. After spending 25-27 years in the university campus, when you are leaving the campus, you are given honours degrees that now you have learned everything but when you have come out of the university do you have answers to the simple questions that life asks if not you have wasted your 25 precious years in the university campus and in the system of education it is said that the education is the preparation for life and living ahead Thus, whatever time you have spent in university campuses helps you to answer the questions that life poses on a day-to-day -day basis. And the next one-third is lost in sleep. When you look at it, how many hours you sleep per day? And if you have a life of 70 years, how much of the life 
time is spent in sleeping. Much of the remainder will be lost in earning bread and butter, going to workplace from home and then coming back home. Almost almost two to three hours every day are spent traveling to and fro from office to home and the remaining little bit will be lost in watching that favorite idiotic box. You know what is the favorite idiotic box? The TV or going to a movie or shaving your beard every day or sometimes even twice a day taking a bath and eating food and all kinds of things and most important of all the brawls the daily brawls that you engaged in your office at home wherever you are if you simply go on calculating it will be a miracle if you can save seven minutes out of 70 years of life for life eternal then it is too short seven minutes between birth and death and all is finished and finished forever it is bound to create panic and this is what has happened in the west as the contributions of the religions evolving out of the judic tradition the christianity and islam this disease of hurriedness has become contagious and it is now spreading all over the world like a wildfire. It has never been so in the East because we had a vast canvas. There was no hurry. Thousands of life. In fact, Vedantic Darshan has been talking about 8,040 million lives that an individual has to go through. Therefore, there is no hurry in any way. However, this created its own trouble. It brought in lethargy and inactivity. You cannot rely on anyone. He will say, I will come five o'clock and he may not turn up for seven days and still he will not feel guilty or ashamed or feel sorry that he has reached late. He will say, what is there? If not this Sunday, then another Sunday I have come. If not five, then six or even seven. It does not matter much. And don't you know that trains run late? There is traffic on the road. So what is the fuss all about it? This created its own problems. I have heard once a man inquired the station master. Whenever I come, the train is late, then why do you publish the timetable? The station master replied very easily, We publish the timetable so we can know how much the train is late. Otherwise, how can we know? It has nothing to do for the train to come in time or not. It is just to know how much late the train is running. Everything is lousy and lazy. This is the bad implication of it. And certainly one thing was great in it, that nobody was in a hurry. That helped meditation immensely. Meditation grew. It is not an accident that meditation grew in the East. It is inevitable that it could have only grown in the East, where people are ready to wait. There is no expectation in waiting. They simply enjoy waiting. This is the real meaning of the Sufi coinage for meditation, Maragba. Maragba means waiting of patience for grace. I know that both the attitudes have their good points as well as the bad points. The West has been able to bring in order and it has been able to discipline things. Trains are running in time, people are efficient, nobody is lazy, it is good. 
but then it creates a certain tension within the whole life you are running so when somebody says that meditation is just sitting silently doing nothing the spring comes and the grass grows by itself you listen to it but you cannot understand it mind will wander how the grass can go by itself and if you do not pull it up mind will wander how the grass can grow by itself if you do not pull it up and then just sitting silently you just watch people they are always in a hurry for no reason hurry has become their lifestyle as meditator you have to understand this very clearly i do not want you to be lazy and lousy and at the same time i do not want you to be in constant hurry and tension and always running not exactly knowing why i have heard once two old men were talking to one another the first said do you remember in our young age we used to chase women the other responded yes i remember perfectly well the only thing i do not remember is why we used to chase them nobody exactly knows why you are running and nobody has time to ask you either everybody is saying see you soon and they are on their way meditators have to create a synthesis as far as the outside world is concerned the western attitude is absolutely right everything should be done as totally and as perfectly as possible you may have next moment to improve upon and do not leave this world with something incomplete that will be your signature leave this world with something complete perfected to your heart's content this is perfectly beautiful as far as the outside world is concerned the western approach is absolutely correct and beautiful for the outside existence i would like the whole world to become the best and for the inside world i would like the whole world to become the east there do not be in a hurry in the inner world just sit and do not pull the grass just sit silently wait let the things happen you simply watch you do not aspire to be a doer indeed that watching is meditation that non doing is meditation that waiting is meditation indeed meditation is synthesis between both inner and outer this synthesis is the grace that surrounds your being as bliss and grace indeed this synthesis is the grace that surrounds your being as bliss and grace